to find the best stuff out there. That's the only consistent factor we can rely on. I wanted to talk a little bit about the background of this found images and found footage world, and that's stock imagery. I'm not sure you're all familiar. Um, but traditionally, we understand stock images to be generic, pre shot, pre cleared material that can be available for creative use. It's available in large resolution sizes, all models have release forms signed, and it's just basically available for purchase. Um, so the idea is that creative professionals have a resource that they can use without having to go out and shoot themselves. And sometimes it's necessary to have that. But the tough thing is, and it can come in any medium, I mean, there's stock images, stock footage, stock music, stock illustrations, stock vector files, even in, you know, it's an industry. Um, and it can come in any subject matter, from kids, to food, to weird conceptual stock, like that, which is actually kind of cool, but kids can kind of have a budget. Um, but generally, the world of stock imagery gets a bad rap for the feeling of stockiness that it has, that sort of stale quality, not a lot of human warmth. I was actually talking to Rick yesterday, who um, spoke last night, and I've been asking people over the week who, like, what's the worst stock people have sort of come across? Um, or what's the worst genre? And Rick's response was business meetings. And I totally agree. <laughs> but this is like, I think we sort of brainstormed and got this thing. It's, I mean, of course, right? What are you going to do with this image? It's so clear that none of these people, these are all actors. It's representing a sort of rainbow ethnicity scale. And, <laughs> I mean, it's just not realistic. It's a fake spreadsheet behind it. It's, it's bad. And it's creative, and it's discerning people. You can spot this stuff a mile away. It just isn't really workable. So I decided that I wanted to find another genre for kind of stock that's difficult to find. Because there, there is good stock out there. You have to dig for it. There is, you can do it. You just have to spend the time. Um, so I decided, well, let's, let's choose something like really relatable, like families cooking dinner together. We do it every day. It's a basic human experience. What does stock provide? <laughs> Classic food, the ecstatic barbecue, <laughs> and what the hell is that? <laughs> um, so, for this particular search, Family's Cooking Dinner, we gave a person five pages of images, so you can get the feeling for how little options you have, all of them pretty much have had this sort of feel. So if you're really stuck and looking for a picture of them and put it together, you know, it'd be a challenge. So we looked for footage too. Let's see what Betty came back with. Family cooking dinner together. <laughs> you know, it's tough. It just throws out a lot of people. It was shot in the sort of maybe early 90s. This search sort of returned two pages of results, so you get a sense for how limited it can be when you're, when you're really zoning on something specific. And this is just a very sort of, we should, you know, we all do this every day. It should be available to us. Um, so here's a project we did with an agency in Chicago, Deutsche. Um, a couple of years ago, it's a lifestyle commercial for the HTC phone. And I wanted to show you guys this and sort of see how much you guys think is stock in this commercial. One can make all the difference. One smile. One dream. One inch. We believe that one person can do amazing things because every single one of us has something special to offer. After all, no one person is exactly like anyone else. So whether they're a 70-year-old bodybuilder 
our nine year old with 2,500 followers. We always put that one person at the heart of everything we do. They want to know their one voice truly matters. This isn't about us, it's about them. Because in the end, we believe that one recommendation will be a thousand times more powerful than ours. After all, the world doesn't need one more company telling people how great it is. But instead, one person simply talking to another. And one company that actually listens. Thinking. 
I uh, decided to go to graduate school for legal criticism, and in 2006, I was admitted into California College of the Arts in San Francisco. We worked in our program, worked really closely with artists and curators and museum directors and filmmakers, a huge network of people that I made it a point to stay in touch with, as you should all do um, as you're in school and fostering all of these connections, um, to stay in touch with these people. Um, it led to job opportunities out of school. I still had to, I was still, you know, plotting things around and picking up various kinds of work, but I did a lot of research work for museums and, and kept doing um, production and research work for production companies, too. This is actually our first job. Looking back, I didn't realize that there was going to be a visual catch, but this is our first job that, that, we, that I did that kind of involved the skill of, of becoming a visual detective. Um, just before graduate school, a friend of mine asked if I could do some image research for a commercial. I had never done research like it before, and I said, yeah, of course I can do it. Sure. Um, and the task seemed super simple. They said, we want you to find a still image of Corey that we can use in a matte painting. Do you guys all know what a matte painting is? It's basically, um, you'll, you don't ever know that you're seeing them. No one ever wants you to know that you're seeing a matte painting. But you see them all the time, like huge box office. Um, movies like Lord of the Rings, when they can't go out and shoot something totally extraordinary, sometimes they'll use fabric or just enough footage to composite in and make it look like they actually shot it themselves. It's a very useful tool, and that's where our skill, my skill comes in. So let's take a look at the first, the first ever. Um, another thing was a sports team that we needed to find. And this 
person had to be a youth team who had not won a game the previous season and who was about to start their next season and needed the nation to come together to give them words of encouragement. And the big challenge for this job in general and this kind of work, this kind of research, is that the date of the campaign was already set. They wanted to launch on and say April 29th. So that wasn't moving. So we had to find teams who weren't going to start their next season. They couldn't have already started their season. It had to be that their season was about to start like a week before the campaign could launch so that some of these promotional material could gain some momentum and some, some uh, you know, some stuff. So here is this one. This is the story of the South London Thunder, a team of pride, guts, and last season, zero wins. But it's a new day, and with unlimited from Sprint, you can help them turn it around for no extra cost. So show your support on Facebook, text your coach words of encouragement, and together, we can make a team of underdogs a parents team. Unlimited from Sprint, on the semi
this stuff. We knew that it was going to be out there. It was, you know, sources for really beautiful vintage stock, and there's no talent in it, so it's easy to, easy to use, easy to do. So um, it was really a fun job. It's, you know, it's a subtle thing. Um, so finding content is one thing, using it is a whole other thing. I always like to imagine a world where legal never even was involved in the making of advertisements. I just wonder what they would look like because it's such a it's such a huge roadblock sometimes in the creative process when but also it's sort of helpful in some ways. It offers that kind of constraint. But nothing kind of can get you have to always get to the sort of gate, the legal gatekeeper before anything can move forward. And you're talking about the legal team at the agency, you're talking about the legal team on the client side. There's a lot of input coming in. And so we we have to sort of be, we're not lawyers ourselves, but we have to be prepared to offer some sense of risk to our clients to say, here's generally kind of what you're looking at. Do you want to use this? Do you want to use this person? Do you need to get clearance for the risk by 10 or low, the risk by 10 high? So we try to offer some sense of assessment, and that's what we call responsible research. We're always looking for the best stuff out there, but we're also helping our clients to use what we find. So otherwise, I mean, there's really no use for us to be doing it. Oh, we're doing not making false promises. Um, so it's not impossible, but it's not easy. This is an example of a spreadsheet on a typical job where we're analyzing the project on a shot-by-shot -shot basis, <coughs> reaching out to people, getting releases signed, asking for masters, making sure everything frame by frame should be in order from our end from the research end. And this is very helpful for an agency, a business affairs team, or legal team to be able to rely on this kind of diligence. Um, here's a spot we did for Venable Bell and Partners in San Francisco for Google. Um, this is a really content heavy job, so it's a good example of sort of the scope of this kind of work, how it can really become um, uh, kind of crazy. Uh, but everything in this clip needed to be found and cleared. On the Kansas City Hill On the Kansas City Hill On the Kansas City Hill I got a on the sun On the So you can see here that we researched thousands of photos, images, maps, people. We even had boots on the ground in Kansas City digging through people's shoeboxes looking for family photos. So this is a kind this is a great example of the kind of job that you know traditional stock images is just not even appropriate for. Um, we have to rely on actual documentary work and into that process of finding and clearing was of utmost importance. Um, here's another example. Uh, this was a spot that we did for, in 2011, um, when Chevy was entering its 100th year, Gibby Silverstein and Partners wanted to help them commemorate that by producing a historical spot that connected Chevy's lineage to the present. And they hired um, Lance Accord, famous director of AIDS in LA, um, to shoot this, and we worked with Goody and with Lance to manage all the imagery and clearance uh, that the spot would entail. So let's have a look at what we can talk about it. <laughs> I'm 
and do the work. We know what our clients are looking for is one of the most, one of the ways that people express what they're looking for is like they want to do this thing but it can't feel stocky. So those images we saw earlier from Getty aren't appropriate. So we're always looking for good material that we can propose to our clients and that we can just start to collect ourselves. So we take in films that our contributors have already made, we take all their B-roll. Um, of people, of 
resources of people doing interesting things, people shooting interesting things. I get emails all the time from people that read our video and um, filmmakers that we need just around saying, yeah, I've got some stuff I'd love to show you, I'd love to contribute some work. Um, always sort of keeping those connections and those opportunities open is super important. And actually looking at this graphic, which I love, of this, um, of this color wheel, spectrum resolution, I just realized that that center icon is actually a really good example, uh, or a good metaphor for what we do. And I think that the three triangles, where the three triangles meet is sort of where this little path lies. It's in the curatorial strength lies in that intersection of creativity, responsibility, and opportunity. And I think probably one of the like safest pieces of advice I can give um, you guys is that if when you go to school and you're looking for work and if you're not sort of in the full-time job of your dreams, just make sure that whatever you're doing you feel fulfilled by. It. You know, I worked in restaurants for five, six, seven years, something like that. But I always made sure that I loved the restaurant that I worked in, I believed in the food, and I wanted to learn about the wine, and I, I was curious to learn about service and hospitality. And a lot of the Skills I learned from working in restaurants have served really, really well in working with clients and dealing with crazy, you know, crazy jobs that are really challenging and difficult. So I just encourage you to, to not be discouraged if you're not in the, the job of your dream. Just make sure whatever you're doing is fulfilling for you. So the last thing I'm going to show you is um, just like any production house, we're very proud of the work we create. Um, we are launching a reel of some of the footage that we've been collecting from the Visual Cat Archive, and you guys are here to see it. So we just finished, that's it on Monday. Um, here you go. Thank you. 